Hi, welcome to Avocet Math. In this video, we're going to look at one more problem from our collection of AMC 12 counting problems. So let's see what we have. A spider has one sock and one shoe for each of its eight legs. In how many different orders can the spider put on its socks and shoes, assuming that on each leg the sock must be put on before the shoe? Well, that's quite a complicated problem description. And I must say, this is one of the classic counting problems from the AMC. And uh, I think it's very difficult to do this problem, uh, the full, complete problem, correctly. Uh, I think most high school students who get this problem correct uh, probably try to solve a simpler problem to get some insight on the more complicated problem. So let's go ahead and try that approach. So let's try a simpler problem where we have fewer legs and uh, one leg probably isn't enough to give us the types of patterns we're looking for but uh, two legs seems like a pretty good choice so let's try that let's assume we have a person uh, with a right leg and a left leg and they have uh, one sock for the right leg one sock for the left leg and one shoe for the right leg and one shoe for the left leg. Um, so already we have a slightly complicated problem and uh, the complication basically comes in the way that we impose the condition of having the sock put on before the shoe. So let's imagine we're going to relax that condition for the time being and let's see how many ways can we put on the socks and shoes in any order just to sort of get this problem started. So uh, let's label our socks and shoes. Uh, the right sock we'll call one, the right shoe we'll call two, the left sock we'll call three, the right sock we'll call, or, uh, left uh, shoe, excuse me, we'll call four. So essentially we have the numbers one through four to represent these four objects. And uh, the set of all possible orders for the socks and shoes is essentially just asking the question of how many different ways can you permutate these four digits and we know what the answer to that is it's four factorial but we'd like to learn a little more and actually list them out so let's go ahead and do that and one way to uh, generate the listing of uh, four factorial permutations is to start with the smaller set of two and three permutations so let's go ahead and do that. So for two items, we have 1, 2, 2, 1 as the possible orders, 2 factorial. For three items, we have uh, the order of possible orders of 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, uh, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1 for a total of uh, 6 factorial. And uh, essentially, we can build up the 4 factorial choices by using the same template four times for the three factorial. So let's write those out. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, four, three, one, three, two, four, one, three, four, two, one, four, two, three. So you get the idea. So let me just crank these out. And uh, start with three now. One, two, four, three, one, four, two, three, two, one, four, three, two, four, one, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, one. And the one starting with the four is the easiest because you basically just use the same last three digits as you have over here. And lastly, 4, 3, 2, 1. So that's all four factorial uh, permutations of the left, uh, or excuse me, the right sock and shoe and the left sock and shoe. And now, uh, starting with this as a starting point, four factorial, now we, we want to go through this list and eliminate the ones that violate the conditions uh, of the sock being, on, being put on before the shoe. So let's go down through this list and look for the cases where 
the, the right sock is not put on before the right shoe. So one, two is the proper order. One, two, correct. Uh, one, two, one, two. Yeah, those are all good. Two, one. Okay, that's our first violation. That's violation. That's a violation. Violation, violation, violation. And over here, two, one. That's a violation. Let's see. Two, one. That's a violation. That's correct. That's a violation. That's a violation. That's a violation. That's correct. That's a violation. So it looks as though we've eliminated 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We've eliminated 12 possibilities by imposing the condition on the right leg that the sock be put on before the shoe. So it looks like we've eliminated half. And uh, that's actually kind of what we expect because for these permutations, half of them you would expect the sock to be before the shoe, and the other half you would expect to be the reverse. So that's actually kind of an expected result. So it looks like we've gone from 4 factorial to 4 factorial divided by 2 by imposing the condition on the right leg. So now let's go ahead and look at the remaining ones and impose the same condition on the left leg. So going through here, we're looking for cases where the 3 does not occur before the 4. So this is the correct order, but 4, 3, that's the incorrect order. Uh, 4, 3, incorrect, incorrect. Go down here, 4, 3, that's incorrect. 4, 3, that's incorrect. 4, 3, that's incorrect. So let's see how many more we've eliminated by imposing the condition on the left leg. So we've eliminated 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 more. So essentially, we've cut the list in half what, yet, yet again. So we've gone from 4 factorial divided by 2 to 4 factorial divided by 2 squared by imposing the condition on the left leg. So here again, we sort of see the insight now that as we impose these conditions on these legs, at each leg, we're basically reducing the available number of permutations by a factor of 2 because half of the permutations have the correct order and half of the permutations have the incorrect order. And that's the critical insight. And that's what allows us to basically expand this solution very easily to the spider because the spider now has eight legs, which gives a total of 16 socks and shoes for a total order of 16 factorial if we don't have the condition of the sock occurring before the shoe. But with each leg, we now have to cut that in half by imposing the condition that the sock occur before the shoe. So we divide that by 2 to the number, to the power of the number of legs, 8, for an answer of 16 factorial divided by 2 to the 8, and that is choice D. Anyway, this is an example of how solving a simpler problem is often the best solution for these more difficult AMC problems. Anyway, hope that was clear. Take care. Bye-bye.